A huge thanks to Brian for sponsoring this video. Mathematicians, welcome back to another video. Very chill video, right before I got something in my eye, right before the start of the weekend. That's so professional, man. Oh, goodness. It's, it's not like I could just re record the video, but well, it is what it is here on this channel. By the way, have you checked out stemmerch.eu, my uh, personal shop where I sell handcrafted products in less time? Like these nuts? Yeah, that's a 3D cutting board turnout quite nicely, right? Um, it's called These Nuts. <laughs> I'm going to post a video very soon on my woodworking channel, how, how I created this one. We got a lot of new products over um, on Stemage.eu and new ones will be added fairly soon. Links down there in the description. So check it out to support the channel this way. Like mentioned before, very chill video right before the weekend. And well, we are just going to solve the equation of the form natural log of x plus one is equal to natural log of x plus one. I'm going to show you various ways to solve an equation like this. Also, we are going to generalize this a tiny little bit more to see what it looks like in general with various other um, co coefficients, you could say. And yeah, I hope you are going to enjoy the video. By the way, if you're not yet familiar with logarithm spaces and all this crazy stuff, then why not take a look at the courses over on Brilliant, especially the calculus course. It, it's a great resource to get started with logarithms and all of the stuff, exponentials. More information at the end of the video, also linked down in the description, check it out. And then continue watching the video for the solution. And now we are going to dive right in. So the first thing that comes to my mind when I see an equation like this would be to basically just raise both sides to the base. Okay, so this right here is the logarithm base e, natural log ln, meaning if we were to take the exponential on both sides, we're going to get rid of the logarithm here basically. What this means is we are going to take e to the log of x plus 1 is equal to e to the log of x plus 1. Okay, putting everything in parentheses. Now the cool thing about raising some base to the logarithm of the space is that e and log in our case is going to cancel out, leaving us just with the argument in and of itself, meaning this is going to give us x plus 1 and this is equal to. Okay, now we need to use the functional equation for the exponential function here. e to the a plus b is the same as e to the a times e to the b, meaning this is the same as saying we get e to the natural log of x times e to the first power and we all know that e to the first power is just e and e to the log of x once again e and log is going to cancel out to just give us x. So x times e. e. That's an old meme. And now we can simply solve for x here. What we can do is we can for example subtract x on both sides giving us um, that 1 is equal to, okay so we get x times e minus x. x is a common factor, factoring it out gives us x times e minus 1 and now to solve for x we are going to divide both sides by e minus 1 giving us overall that the solution to our above, uh, above e equation, e above equation, <laughs> above e equation is the same as 1 over e minus 1. And we can divide by e minus 1 because e is the successor of 2 and the predecessor of 3. <laughs> okay, it's not equal to 0. Okay, it's, it's an integer, but e minus 1 is not equal to 0. So yeah, um, this right here is the solution to our equation. You can plug it in and check if this is indeed the case. There are other ways to solve something like this. A second way would be, for example, to basically make use of the fact that 1 is the same as the natural log of e. Okay, meaning the natural log and e is, is going to cancel out, okay, because it's e to the first power, tracking the 1 to the front, log and e is going to cancel out, leaving us just with 1. Meaning we're going to rewrite our equation as log of x plus 1 is equal to log of x plus log of e. And now we can make use of the logarithm property, okay, that that's the function equation for the logarithm, that log of x plus log of e is the same as log of x times e. Well, now we have an equation log of x plus 1 is equal to log of x times e. Now if everything okay, is in our domain basically, all the numbers that we can plug into here fulfill certain conditions, so all the x's, okay, such that 
nothing is going to diverge and the like. Our logarithm is a function which is strictly increasing. Looks like this, okay, where right here is um, one. Now, for strictly increasing functions or strictly decreasing functions, for example, exponentials, uh, exponentials and, and logarithms, we have that we can basically compare arguments here. Okay, this is just going to be the case. If we have an equality here, then since it's strictly increasing, we can only basically have one point of intersection, for example, this one right here. Because there is no way our trajectory of our function is going to change in the process such that we are going to get a second value which could be um, solving this equation right here. Meaning what we are going to do is we are just going to compare arguments, meaning x plus 1 must be equal to x times e. I mean it's basically the same thing as taking e to the blah 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 on both sides, just base e. It's basically the same procedure that we are going to use here. And we know how to solve this equation, namely we have done it before, just like here. Now this is the second way. Now for a third way, this is right now the last one that comes to my mind. One thing you, you could also do is do a change of base and then all the um, logarithms of e are going to cancel out in the process, but that would be kind of useless in our case since we already have natural log. What we can also do is um, we are going to solve this equation for one at first. Okay, what we are going to do is we are going to subtract log of x on both sides, leaving us with log of x plus one. Um, minus log of x is equal to 1. And now we can once again make use of the functional equation for the logarithm to basically turn this subtraction here into the logarithm of x plus 1 divided by x. This works because the negative 1 is something that we can drag to the inside basically as an exponent x to the negative 1th power giving us plus log of 1 over x and then we can make use of the function equation once again to basically multiply x plus 1 by 1 over x. No matter how you get there, it's going to turn out to be log of x plus 1 divided by x. And now what we can do is we can once again raise both sides to the power of e, okay, to base e, cancelling out the logarithm, giving us x plus 1 divided by x is equal to, well, e. And now we can multiply both sides by x because it's not equal to zero, probably, okay? Zero wouldn't even satisfy this e equation just because log of zero would diverge to negative infinity, giving us overall that x plus one is equal to x times e. Well, and we know how to solve this equation, namely, we have already done it up here. Yeah, those are the three ways I could come up with to solve this right here. You can probably also employ, oh, Taylor series expansions. I leave this to you as the viewer, as a tiny little exercise. That's probably kind of exciting to do. But now we are going to generalize this a tiny little bit more. At the moment we have only talked about the natural log, but there are other logarithms to other bases. For example, just the logarithm to the base a of x plus 1 is equal to logarithm to base a of x plus 1. And the procedure is completely analogous and we're just going to make use of one of the ways here and I think this right here is the easiest one that we have done at first. Meaning what we're going to do is we're going to use base a on both sides. a and log of base a is going to cancel out to give us x plus 1 is equal to a times log of base a of x meaning the log and the a is going to cancel out once again the process giving us x and by the function equation, we are going to get once again that this is times a to the first power, which is just a. And we basically know how to solve this equation. It's the same procedure as here, meaning what we are going to do is we are going to have 1 is equal to x times a minus 1. And dividing both sides by a minus 1, it's going to give us x is equal to 1 divided by a minus 1. Now we just have one condition here that must be satisfied, namely that a is not equal to 1 because then we would divide by zero. But could there be an equation where this is true? I mean, if we were to plug one into here, let's see, then we get log of, um, no, log to base one. Yeah, that's the base, so this doesn't work. Log to the base one um, is something that does not work out because we would divide by zero, so this is not defined. But yeah, this right here is the first generalization that we can do. But there are other ways to generalize this equation. For example, we have the plus one here and the plus one here. How about having other constants here like s and t for example? How about we take a look at the e equation 
log to the base a of x plus t is equal to log of base a of x plus s. Well, procedure is analogous, just like before. Taking base a on both sides, using the function e equation of the exponential function basically, this net is going to cancel out, giving us x plus t is equal to, this net is going to cancel out, x times a to the s. To the s. <laughs> s. Good old s that we have here. And now once again subtracting x on both sides, giving us overall and factoring out the x, t is equal to x times a to the s, the s minus 1. And now we are going to divide both sides by a to the s minus 1, giving us that um, x is equal to t divided by a to the s minus 1. And this right here is the furthest generalization I could come up with, uh, stemming from the original problem. Once again, restriction a to the s must not be equal to 1. Okay, and this is only going to happen if either s is equal to 0. Okay, this is something that shall not happen. In this case, our equation doesn't even have a solution. Yeah, this doesn't work out. Our e equation wouldn't have a solution if s were equal to 0. Then we would look for log of x plus 1, for example, is equal to log of x. Taking base e on both sides gives, uh, gives us x plus 1 is equal to x. x is going to cancel out, giving us 1 is equal to 0. And this would only work in modulo 1. Okay? <laughs> But we are not talking about this right now. So for s equal to 0, this wouldn't have a solution. And also for a being equal to 1, this also wouldn't have a solution. But those are all the cases I could come up with. Maybe you can come up with even more of a generalization. Tell me down there in the comments. Maybe with uh, some kind of um, e exponent here to the nth power and to the mth power here. Maybe that's something to take a look at. But I hope you did enjoy what you have seen today. And if you want to see more problems like this, if you're interested in more calculus, logarithms, exponentials, then I invite you to try out the contents of today's sponsor pre and who are kind enough to sponsor yet another video here on this channel. Now I already talked a tiny little bit about um, the graphical interpretation of the logarithm here and how this can help you decide if you can basically compare arguments or exponents of a certain function. And this is not the only instance where this does apply, but it's one of the instances. And Brilliant is going to give you a lot of graphical interpretations of different kind of functions like parabolas, logarithms, exponentials and so on. And this is not all. With their over 60 interactive courses in all topics STEM, being the mathematics that we did today, physics, computer sciences, etc., chemistry also too, they are a powerhouse in the education branch, especially on the internet. If you are a fan of intuitive understanding of problems and also topics in the STEM field, then Brilliant is definitely the perfect fit for you. You are going to make use of your own two hands to play around with graphs, interactive content, graphics, like in the geometry section, grab a triangle, play around with it and see how the interior angles of the triangle are going to work out that the sum of the interior angles is always going to add up to 180 degrees. Brilliantly, <laughs> pun intended, visualized in their interactive courses. And trust me when I say this, you are going to have a great learning effect from Brilliant. Even I, who already knows quite a lot of mathematics, Learn something new every week on pre -end. I'm there on a weekly basis and I take a look at their old courses and newer courses they are adding um, on a regular basis and I always find myself wondering how I did not know some things before, how I missed out on this fact and this fact and how I didn't have topics like Markov chains and the like covered in university even though they are so university useful in, in so many applications. And if this feels like something for you, if you want to try it out for yourself, then definitely make sure to check out the link at the top of the description, preamble.org slash mess. With it, you are going to get free access to a big portion of Brilliant already, but more importantly, the first 200 people, that's two with two O's, okay, next to it, to actually make use of the link, get 20% of an annual premium subscription, which is a great deal considering how much content they already have available on the website and how much content they are adding on a regular basis. So definitely make sure to check it out and support the channel this way. And if you did enjoy today's video, why not make sure to subscribe to the channel too. And if you want to support the channel a bit more, why not check out... <laughs> the <laughs> These nerds getting <laughs> over on Stemmerge EU. 
it's made from three types of nut wood. That's why it's called these nuts. But yeah, um, also whack. Please pre-register for my game. And I'm gonna tell you guys a flame today. Ciao.